Hey, what's up YouTube? Welcome to a brand new video. My name is Prince Mason. Today I'm going to be telling you a little bit about how I shot this image and also I'll be showing you how I retouch an image like this. But before we get into that, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please make sure you subscribe and do not forget to turn on notifications so you can receive notifications every time I put up a new video. Also, if you like my videos, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. It goes a long way. It helps the channel a lot. And with all that being said, let's get straight into today's video. Now, this image was shot while I was on a trip to Abuja. I did not go with any lights. I didn't go with any strobes. I went to do a video project and um, I wanted to do a shoot. So I called Zara up, makeup artist, Jidos and Ola. You should check their page and uh, pages out. I'll put them in the description below. And we got to doing the shoot. But by the time the makeup was done, it was pretty late. There was literally like almost no light for a natural light shoot that I'd probably be shooting at like ISO 1600 and I wasn't trying to do that. So um we went under the street lights and um yeah and we got the shot basically when you shoot with lights like that um natural light that's really not moving around like obviously you can't move the sun or just move the street light all you have to do is get your models to turn around you know let them turn left turn right most times it's good they turn towards the light it creates this really flattering image and you know um it's always really nice when you have them turn towards the light so just have your model turn around when you're shooting with natural light or you're shooting with a source of light that you can't really move around and it will go a long way to help you produce good images that way you can see you know in real time how the picture is going to look after you take it now this image was shot with my sigma 35 mm art we shot this at i shot this at 1.4 um iso 6000 uh, iso 640 iso 640 and 1 80th of a second the settings are right there so with all this little story being said let's get straight into retouching this image now the first thing i did was i worked on my kelvin um it was a little bit too warm for me so i took that to 4000 and my tint um i think it was a little greenish so i just moved that to 1.9 so that was the first thing i did and you know that's like almost the first thing i do when i'm editing most of my images i always like my white balance to be what i was seeing that day or maybe i just want to give it a stylized look then i'll go for what i want it to look like then i pulled up my highlights because obviously the dress i didn't want any places blown out around there so i think it was on 64. and um, pulled up my shadows a bit another thing i do in capture one is oh by the way this is capture one it's a raw processing software just in case i missed that um, another thing I do is I pull in my blacks just a little bit to add um, some contrast in the blacks of the image. Then I pull in my whites till this point where my whites start peaking. So, so yeah, just going to do that. And that's all I do in Capture One. Literally, I just process my raw files. I don't do too much. Then after that, I'll take my file, edit, Photoshop CC 2017. Yes, we don't have 2018 yet. And yes, we'll just wait for it to come up in Photoshop. And that's it. Now, the first thing I can notice, like right off the bat with this image is that I shot, sorry, I, I forgot to tell you guys this. The way I got this effect here was that I shot through some um, gold flowers that we had. Literally, they were like some artificial gold flowers we had. Um, so I just put them in front of my lens. I was shooting at 1.4 and I shot through that. That's how I got this um, dreamy, firefly effect around the image and um yeah so the first thing i want to do is make the greens in the back match this this yellow golden effect that is here so how i'll do that is i'll go to filter then i'll open my camera raw filter um i'll come to my hsl and grayscale then for the hue i'll pull my greens back so basically this just affects only my greens and as you can see the greens and the back at the back they've already matched the golden color that's um this um flaring is producing so that way everything looks pretty even so after doing that so yeah i'm just going to show you guys the before and the after this the before and this the after you see how green it was and this the after so after doing that the next thing i'll do is i'll do my skin retouching so frequency separation um for this image i think the radius i used was six now you have to use different radiuses when you're doing frequency separation. If you if your radius is too high for like the resolution of the image or how sharp the image is, then you probably have a problem when it comes to blending your images. Uh, you guys know I use the mixer brush and it would probably not work well for you when the radius of your blur is too high. So yeah. 
that was my check layer. Most times I don't use it, so I just delete it. Um, now, I use this frequency separation action in case you want to ask. I got it off, um, I think, fxray.com, fx-ray.com. So you guys check it out. I have put the description in, like, um, put it in the description in, like, a lot of my videos. So I'll try and do that here. Um, so with that being said, let's just jump straight to low frequency. I'll pick my mixer brush tool. I zoom into my image. Then I'll start working. Now, her skin is good. And the makeup is actually very good. So I really do not want to spend too much time, you know, doing the skin retouching on this image. Now, if you have no idea how um, the mixer brush works with the frequency separation, please make sure you check like my other videos. I'll link them in the description below. I have um, like two or three videos showing this technique on how to use your mixer brush tool with frequency separation. So check out those videos. So now all I'm doing is blending her skin, basically the gra gradient or so between the highlights and the shadows, if you understand what I'm saying. When you work with frequency separation, you have to be very careful so you do not overdo things, you know, so your image does not look flat. You need to know where the you know you need to understand that highlights and shadows would actually shape your um, subject's face or actually shape your subject's face so when you mess up the transition between the highlights and the shadows on you know your subject then you tend to mess up how they look so you have to be very careful so for this okay i think this is totally fine um then i'm just going to blend the skin around here a little bit Right here to take this out. You really don't want to do too much. Okay, so sometimes always zoom out. It's um, good practice when you zoom out because you won't see the images or you won't see your image the same way um, the people that are looking at. Your image you see trust me nobody's going to be looking at your image like this but now we're just going to take out some blemishes yeah now you need to understand that when you shoot the high so it kind of like exaggerates a lot of things in people's faces because you know your image you definitely have noise so yeah there's really not much to do here so um, to cut the smile lines, then this, um, yeah, so, just going to take this out, take some of this out, right here, and yeah, that's it, basically, um, that's all we're doing for skin retouching, for that, this is the before, and this is the after, so now we're just going to get into dodge and burn. How I do my dodge and burn is by using my curve adjustment tool. So um, instead of using a, an action, I'm just going to do it so you guys see it. So I'll create a curve. I'll change my curve to screen. It gets pretty bright. Then I'll invert my layer by uh, my uh, adjustment layer or my mask. I mean, I'll invert my mask by using Control I or Command I on a Mac. Um, yeah. Then I'll create another curve adjustment layer. Change my blend mode to multiply, get dark. Then I'll invert my mask and put them in a group, name them dodge and burn. So that's it. Pretty simple, easy, straight to the point. Now pick a brush, a normal brush tool. Make sure my brush hardness is soft and change my flow to five. Now all I have to do is dodge. Now this is the dodge layer and this is the burn layer. So the layer with the screen blend mode 
is usually the dodge layer while the layer with the multiply blend mode is the burn layer so now make sure you remember you inverted your mask and when you invert your mask basically from white to black remember that white reveals and black hides so if we want to reveal what's here i want to do it in a very subtle way that's why we're using our flow at five all we have to do is pick a white brush and just brushing so now i'm dodging now what I do normally is I would turn off my frequency separation layer and I want to see exactly where I would have to dodge in case, you know, I made a mistake or maybe I probably over did the blending and all that. I'm trying to bring out the shadows and the highlights and the mid-tones exactly where they were before I did my frequency separation. That way my face or the face of my subject still retains the same amount of depth that I had before. Now I'm just going to dodge this image. Make sure you, you know, reduce, increase your brush size depending on the area that you're working on. Nah, that's too much right there. And, you know, with anything when it, as regards retouching, you know, try not to overdo it because you know your image will start looking fake uh, just going to zoom in here and get some highlights on her lips brighten her eyes a little bit and yeah so i think that's that's enough for our dodge. As you guys can see, I keep increasing and reducing my brush depending on the surface size of what I'm dodging or burning. So now I'm just going to burn this image. So I've moved up here. If you have no idea about dodge and burn, you can check out my previous videos. I have like a full tutorial on dodge and burn. If you do not know how to use your mask, um, layer mask, there are like a ton of tutorials on YouTube that will teach you how to use that. You should actually learn that because that's one of like the first things you should learn when, you know, when you start using Photoshop because you're probably going to use it all the time. So yeah, now I'm just going to turn back my frequency separation layer on and you guys can see looks exactly the same. So these are dodge and burn, these are before and this are after. Pretty nice, pretty neat. So now after doing that dodge and burn, the next thing I want to do is I can see that her face looks a lot more yellow than you know her skin, probably due to the fact that um, the makeup was a bit different or maybe the way the light's hitting her face is different, whatever it is. So we're just going to you know work on that. So now all I have to do is get my selective color adjustment layer. I'll invert my um, layer mask on that. So control the command I, then increase my brush flow to 100%. And now I'm just going to paint in here because I want to see the effect it's having in real time on my subject. Okay. So um, I can see that her face is like a little bit more yellow. So that's one thing I'm going to do. I'm going to add some more yellows to, you know, that then Science, yeah, maybe just a little bit. What about magenta? Okay, yeah. Okay, should I make it lighter or darker? No, nah, just lighter. Okay, so now all you have to do is play with this till you actually get like the skin color to look as close as it looks with the face. And um, yeah. So I think this is good. So this is the before and this is the after. You see that? This is the before, this is the after. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit for you guys to see it. So this is the before and this is the after. Yeah, looks close enough to me and that's fine. So um, it's really not hard to match your skin tones. You just really need to know what you're doing. And um, yeah, I think this works for me. Um, what I'll do is probably go to my blacks and just Lighten that up a bit. 
no, just going to leave this at zero. So yeah, so this works for me, this is fine. Okay, that works. Now from here, the next thing I'll do is I'll create like levels. I'll pull in my whites just a little bit because I'm, what I'm trying to do now is add some contrast to this image, then pull in my blacks. Okay, that's nice. Um, create a hue saturation adjustment layer because I don't like my images to be too saturated. Put that at minus seven. Okay. So yeah, this looks good. Now I would stop here, but I just want to go like further. I want the image to look a little bit more artistic than just like this because the picture looks a little bit artsy. So I just want to do something different. So now what I'll do next is I'll create a curves adjustment layer. If you watch my previous tutorial that I just put up, I showed you guys how to create the filmic look. Um, that's what I'm trying to do here now. So let's go into that. So my RGB channels, I'll create three anchor points. And just slide my blacks up. I'll go to my reds, I'll do the same thing. Just slide my red so just a little bit, not too much. Go to my greens, same thing. Just slide it up, not too much. Then I'll go to my blues. Now I like adding blues in my shadows. That used to be my thing in the past, but you know, I've slowed down on that. And now, I just drag my blues up. Okay, now this is where we're at. Um, I'm just going to reduce the opacity a little bit. Okay, so this looks good. Um, the next thing I want to do is add noise to this image, which you know would make it look even better. So how you do that is to create a new layer right here. Then fill your new layer with black. So how you do that is you hold command and delete. Basically, sorry, that'll fill it with the foreground color. Shift and delete. Then you can select what you want to do. So let um, me fill it with foreground color, which is black. Then I'll go to filter, noise, add noise. And this is typically the amount I use for you know, things like this. So I'm just going to click OK. Then I'll change my blend mode to screen. Now you can see, you know, the image has like a lot of noise, um, but that's too much. So I'm just going to reduce the opacity to 30, 30 35. Okay. So what I usually do is create another layer, change to white, which is my background color. Now you need to know which one it is. So you, your background and your foreground color, they actually show down here. So when the color on top is usually your foreground color and the color behind is your black and your background color. So now I'm just going to go to noise, add noise. Same thing right there. I'll change this to multiply and set my opacity to 30. Okay, so this works for me. Just going to put this to in a group and name them nice. So I can always reduce them if I want. So yeah, this is how this image looks right now. The last thing I'll do is I really do not like the blues in the background. I think it takes too much from the image or it's adding like an extra thing to the image that I don't like. So I'm just going to take that out. Um, hue saturation. You see this? hand right here, I'm just going to click that, then it brings out the color picker tool. And this would actually select your blue colors that are around this, you know, space, then all you have to do is just desaturate them. And you can see it's taking the blues not just out of that place, but you can see her dress here has a blue tint on it. So it's just going to take that out. And yes. And you can see that. Just gonna take that out, and that's fine by me. 
So the last thing I would like to do to this image is fix the hair. Now her hair looks great. She has like really, really great natural hair. Um, I'm not trying to take anything away from that. So all I'll do now is create a, a new, like, what do you call this? But yeah, let's just do that. So all you have to do is hold Command, Option, Shift, and E. A merge visible layer. That's what I was trying to say. So I'll create the new merge visible layer. So um, let me do that again. If you are using Windows, then you know that um, Command on Mac is Control on PC, and Option on Mac is Alternate on PC. So that's Command, Option, Shift, and E. So that's Control, Alternate, Shift, and E. I'm going to go to Filter, Liquify. And yeah, I just want to make the hair a little bit more fluffy than it is and fill some places up. Um, try not to do too much with your mixer brush tool. Sorry, not your mixer brush tool, I mean your liquify tool. Um, try not to do too much with your liquify tool. Um, if not, you're going to stretch out the pixels to the point that it starts looking funky. So this is the before and this is the after. So yeah, so this is our final image, basically. Um, let me show you where we started from. I'll pull this in the group. This is our before and this is our after. Let me zoom in so you guys can see. This is our before and this is our after. Image looks great, looks wonderful. You guys should try this out um, with your images and let me know if it works for you. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I know this one is pretty long and um, I hope you guys watch everything if you're going to this point then thank you so much and um, if you like today's video please give this video a thumbs up it helps this channel a lot if you want to be a part of this channel if you want to be a part of my community please subscribe to my channel and do not forget to turn on notifications if you are not sure yet still subscribe i'll probably change your mind in the future comment below let me know if you love this video let me know whatever kind of videos you want to see in the future and i'll plan on doing that thank you so much for watching today's video my name is prince mason and i'll see you guys soon Peace.